Intresset för kryptovaluta växer och priserna verkar påverkas av den amerikanska valrörelsen. Med oss för att diskutera tillgången har vi Jean-Marie Monetti. You're the CEO of CoinShares, a company I want to discuss a little bit more. But first of all, welcome. How's the crypto universe doing? Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Gabriel. I'm very happy to be here. Um, cryptocurrency ecosystem is doing fantastically well. You know, we have gone through a summer, which is always a period of transition. And now the market is waiting for a few macroeconomic events, such as the US election or the carry trade in Japan. I was very fascinated to see Bitcoin plunges retreat. Not much, but still retreat during the presidential debate. It seems that a Donald Trump victory is a big driver in Bitcoin prices. Yeah, there's been a lot of speculation around what will a uh, Republican president do for crypto versus a Democrat president do for big, for crypto. And at CoinShare, we do believe, not being an American company, we still do believe that uh, cryptocurrency should be a bipartisan topic, shouldn't be the kind of... Uh, prevailing area of a special camp. Now, it is true that uh, President Trump made a lot of declaration in favor of crypto regulation, which uh, President Biden didn't do, uh, or his administration didn't do it during the last mandate. So as a result, uh, the fact that crypto wasn't really mentioned yesterday during the debate, the fact that, you know, maybe uh, President Trump's prestation uh, on stage was not as good as the previous one, uh, kind of drive a bit of a uh, you know, change in mood. And you can look at Polymarket, which is a big kind of crypto uh, uh, fear and sentiment market for betting. And you can see that, you know, by the end of the debate, it was seven point under uh, versus Kamala Harris. That's quite interesting. Regulation is another political factor that's obviously very important. We saw it in the US when ETFs were allowed. How is this playing out right now? What are, what are the biggest regulatory issues? Well, so the ETF being allowed in the U.S. was a big, uh, I would say, step forward. However, compared to Europe, it is a late step forward. Like Sweden, specifically, has been uh, the host of crypto issuers such as XBT providers since 2014. So the, the Swedish investors have been able for the last 10 years to be able to do this kind of investment. So ETF coming in the U.S. is a big news. Uh, it has answered uh, the starvation of, of a lot of investors. Uh, however, it's not resolving everything. There is a bigger problem around the underlying regulation around cryptocurrency, which will certainly be resolved in the, in the first semester of a new administration in the U.S. In Europe, we get Mika, which is being implemented as we speak and will be in full uh, I would say action uh, by the end of the year. So regulation is coming to Europe, regulation is coming and being implemented, regulation is coming to the US. The US will catch up, it's just one big country, they don't need to have different countries uh, decide how to implement the same rules. So they will definitely catch up despite a perceived uh, delay uh, at the start. Regulators are catching up. Is the business catching up too? There's a lot of money laundering accusations when you talk about the crypto universe. It can obviously be used for illicit purposes as well. What are your thoughts on this? Well, money laundering is always a big word. It's always a word which is scaring people. Uh, at CoinShare, uh, we take it very seriously. We come from a regulated background. We always run the company as a regulated entity. So AML, CFT and all this kind of compliance monitoring program has always been at the center of what we do. Now, when it comes to the wider industry, it is fair to say that in the early days, it was maybe not the center of attention because of the libertarian kind of ethos of cryptocurrency in the very early days. But as cryptocurrency has become more and more of, a, I would say, institutionalized demand, then we saw a compliance program, AML program, CFT program getting implemented. Um, I think yesterday, um, Bitfinex, Tether, and a few others uh, created a joint task force for AML. Uh, a few weeks ago, during the Jackson Hole uh, summit, uh, Binance announced they were employing 2,200 compliance people in the compliance team. So you can see there is a real change uh, in the in the way things are going on. And if you were to try to open today an account on one of these platforms, it would be much, much more complicated than a simple bank ID. That's very encouraging and positive, albeit yeah. difficult for me as, as, a, as a consumer. One last market dynamic question. I often look at Bitcoin and crypto prices as very closely connected to risk appetite, to the Nasdaq index in the, in the US, for example. Your thoughts on other drivers apart from regulation? Look, we, we believe crypto, especially Bitcoin, is an hyper asset. So it's the ultimate hyper asset. It has uh, the virtue of like offering on the long term very little correlation to other asset class. 
Now, what we see as well, which is very important, is like how macro factors are, in, are influencing on a short-term basis uh, what is happening in the, in the crypto industry. So, for instance, the carry trade unwinding uh, in Japan mm -hmm. has a definitive impact on, on Bitcoin trading. Uh, the government agency selling uh, a lot of cryptocurrency sales uh, over the last 10 years during the summer has a lot of market impact. So, we see all the things, you know, like the 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 swap line uh, between Japan and the US being reused uh, as a way to limit uh, the intervention of the, of the BOJ is also another stuff to look at. So there's plenty of different factors which are macroeconomic factors which can have some local impact on the price of Bitcoin uh, whilst keeping Bitcoin as this hyper asset. Let's talk about coin shares a little bit. You sound very French, I'm guessing. It's also a bit... It's difficult to hide, yeah. <laughs> it's a British company by origin, I understand. It is listed in Sweden. I don't think all our viewers are, our viewers are quite it is, familiar. It is, it is a complicated story. Uh, the truth of this matter is like we wear a Jersey headquarter hedge fund specializing in commodity, uh, and this hedge fund uh, shut its door uh, for lack of... Uh, commodity cycle being over in 2013. Uh, and as such, a funding partner stayed together and said, okay, what do we do next? And crypto come on our way. Um, so we start operating from where we were in Jersey, regulated uh, as an investment business and a fund service business. And um, eventually uh, we end up in Stockholm in 2016 uh, because KNC Miner, uh, which was this kind of uh, darling of VC company, uh, very, very, uh, uh, as spearhead of mining in Europe, uh, what, uh, created this kind of unique ETF program called XBT Provider. And so CoinShare stepped in during the bankruptcy program uh, to be able to acquire this asset and turn it around. Uh, you know, we acquired this company. There was like, I think, 20,000 clients and $5 million of asset. Uh, I think today there is like $3 billion of asset and probably at least 70,000 users uh, in Sweden only. So it's a, it's a real Swedish uh, activity uh, on that part. It's also Nordic, obviously, but it's really, really a, a Swedish uh, mindset on this product. Well, we're happy to have you, even if it's just a mailbox uh, and a stock, stock listing. Well, it's more than a mailbox. It's 70,000 customers. Yeah. <laughs> Apologize. Are these, is Sweden a big market in terms of interest in crypto per capita compared to France or Britain, for example? Um, I think the way to look at that is a little bit different. The way to look at that is how is the mentality towards uh, retirement plan management? And what you tend to see is like in the country where retirement plan management is much more driven by the individuals themselves than the state. So France versus Sweden, for instance, or France versus Germany. France and the state do everything for you. Uh, Germany, the state do nothing for you. And when you get this kind of comparison, you can see that the German or the Swedes will be much more active in like having some risk on and risky asset in the portfolio for long-term appreciation, while the French will just do real estate. So, uh, you know, if, and if you look at the overall ETF penetration of the market, France is a very difficult market to penetrate. Germany and Nordic is a very... Uh, prolific market for ETF. Finally, I believe you have a large proportion of private investors among your customers. You offer ETFs and different investing solutions. How? What's the plan for uh, institutional investors? Sure. So, like, look, crypto has been built uh, for retail uh, at the very, very beginning. So it was normal that the very first customer of cryptocurrencies were retail. Uh, it was way too complicated for institutional to get in, the access were not very much developed. There was no banking uh, on ramp and off ramp, so institution didn't really come to the party until very, very, very late. Uh, which is interesting because of the reverse of any other financial asset. Normally, the financial asset you get the institution doing it first, and then eventually they give the crumbs to the retail. Here we are upside down, where the retail took the first uh, shot at it, and then institution are like slowly but surely coming into it. So Concia for a very long period of time was 100% retail customers. Today, our client mix is probably much more like 75 or 80% retail and 20, 25, 20, 20% uh, institution. But even the quality of the institution is still kind of like a sophisticated family office, uh, small asset managers, but like the landmark names are, you know, despite what we see in the US, there is a lot of noise in the US, but the, I would say, uh, translation into real action is still very limited. Quite interesting. I'm sure the times are changing in this space. Yeah. Indeed. Jean-Marie Magnetti, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Gabriel. Very good.